Well, the U.S. has played down fears of an escalation of tensions with Iran over the Strait of Hormuz, saying it does not seek a confrontation with Tehran. The Pentagon, however, still insists that it has no plans to withdraw American warships from the region. Iran has long accused the U.S. of adopting hostile policies. I think the enemy has got the message. As you saw, once our naval drills began, the enemy's aircraft carrier left the Strait of Hormuz for the Sea of Oman. We repeat that we do not intend to take any irrational action, but we are ready to counter any threat. We have warned the aircraft carrier which posed a threat to us against returning to the Persian Gulf, and we are not going to repeat the warning. A strong warning from Iran's army commander, Major General Atollah Salehi, to the U.S. The USS John C. Stennis is one of the U.S. Navy's biggest warships. The nuclear-powered vessel carries 56 aircraft and around 3,300 personnel. The warship left the Persian Gulf for the Sea of Oman after Tehran began its 10-day naval drills in the region. Tensions between Iran and the U.S. comes against the backdrop of what Tehran calls Washington's decades-long hostility. The U.S. has frequently threatened Iran on different occasions over its nuclear energy program. Tehran has in return said it will respond to any U.S. threat in kind, that is, with threat. Iran and the U.S. severed ties after the victory of the 1979 Islamic Revolution. Ever since, Washington has imposed numerous sanctions on Iran, which target not only the Iranian government, but also civilian industries. The U.S. has banned the sales of passenger plane spare parts to Iran, technically jeopardizing the lives of civilians traveling with Iranian airlines. Iran accuses the U.S. of funding terrorist groups operating in border regions of the country. The terrorist groups are responsible for attacks that have killed large numbers of Iranian citizens. Washington's antagonism against Iran is not limited to sanctions. The U.S. has for many times threatened Tehran with military action. Presidential candidates from the Republican Party have openly promised to attack Iran if elected. Tehran has warned against any attack and has stressed its response will be a crushing one. We will protect the borders of our country until our last drop of blood. If an enemy wants to attack our borders, we will stand firmly and respond decisively. Well, James Morris, political commentator, joins me from Los Angeles. Welcome to the program, sir. Uh, Mr. Morris, oil prices have gone up following the recent rhetoric exchanged by Iran and the United States. For how long can the U.S. afford to do this, given its economic crisis, especially its debt dilemma? Hello, thank you for having me back on Press TV in such dangerous times. Uh, I first of all like to say that I'm an America first patriot and I don't want to see any Americans die or get horribly wounded in a war for Israel against Iran like we saw in Iraq. But I felt compelled to come on the air today and I appreciate your invitation for me to do so to explain why we're facing uh, what we're facing with regard to a possible war with Iran which could be uh, manifested into a wider war in the region which could even become the next world war if Russia and China get involved. It's very dangerous and that's why I was compelled to come on the air with you today. The bottom line is the pro-Israel lobby in America, APAC, the neoconservatives, which are the vanguard of that lobby, have been pushing these sanctions against the Iranian regime. And the bottom line to that is not the nuclear program, because we see Israel with 200 to 400 nuclear weapons uh, that they won't open up to inspection by the IAEA. What this war, if it comes, and by the look of it, looks like it's going to come. And please, do not, with the aircraft carrier Stennis coming back in the Gulf, um, do not give the Zionists what they are looking for to start a war against Iran. I know you also have to be on the lookout for a possible USS Liberty incident where the Israelis could uh, stage an attack against an American ship to draw the U.S. into war against Iran. We have to be aware of that as well when Israel murdered 34 American sailors and Marines on the USS Liberty on June 8, 1967, and tried to blame it on Egypt um, to get us into a war against Egypt, which could have gone into a world war as well back then. So we have to be on guard against that. But the bottom line here is that the Zionist lobby in America has pushed these sanctions against the Iranian regime, um, and it's taking us to the brink of war. It's driving up the oil prices, as you just said. In fact, Congressman Ron Paul if you go to my blog, ushijacked.com, which is also america-hijacked.com, 
He's saying that any of these sanctions that are being pushed for against Iran are acts of war and that the Iranians have the right to self-defense. Now, Indeed. it's now, imperative that the world wakes up to this to see what these Israel firsters, the American Israel Public Affairs Committee, the neoconservatives, which own the U.S. Congress, they own the Republican Party, they're pushing us to war, and it's utterly unacceptable for patriotic Americans to put America first like myself. Indeed. Now, Mr. Morris, I mean, uh, I mean with, with the talk of these threats uh, about uh, a war between Iran and America, th the question is uh, how ready militarily is the United States for another war after Iraq and Afghanistan? Well, you have to realize the U.S. has a very potent uh, and formidable air force, and its navy is the best in the world. And, uh, and I'm glad for that. Like I said, I'm a patriotic American and puts Israel first. But I just don't like to see the American Navy, the American um, Air Force, and U.S. troops, which are being repositioned out of Iraq. Uh, there's still 17,000 uh, personnel in Iraq, contractors and whatnot, but American troops have been repositioned out of Iraq, and they're basically going to be staged in, in Kuwait for a coming war with Iran. Mm -hmm. So we have to realize that, yes, even though troops have been re removed from Iraq, and the American military is stretched all over the world, and that's why Ron Paul has so accurately said that America is going broke, and we need to bring those troops home to defend American borders instead. Right. But they're also, also, the American Air Force, like I said, is very formidable, and that's still in full effect, and also the American Navy. And they can bomb Iran into the Stone Age if, a, a, you know, a war breaks out. And please, the Zionists in America, the Israel Firsters, would like nothing more than for your country to attack an American warship, the Stennis, or the aircraft terrorist Dennis or any other American ship to set the stage for war, and it will be all over the pro-Israel biased media here saying, Iran is an attack on American ship, we've got to retaliate. No Indeed. mention will, right. will be made about the sanctions that have been imposed on Iran by the pro-Israel lobby here, which actually took this situation to the brink of war. It's utterly unacceptable. Again, go to ushijack.com, look at the recent post at the top there, and please, don't let a USS Liberty incident get us involved in war as well. The Israelis got away with that right. attack, and they very well could try to pull another one to get us into a war uh, between Iran and America. All right. Uh, I'm sorry we have to leave it there. Many thanks uh, to you. James Morris, political commentator from Los Angeles. Thanks for your time.